Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, 
you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we, who have known the mystery of that light on earth, may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit we lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders the rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with the righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord in that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth 
and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I'm so glad to be with you. Tonight I am going to preach about hope. Right? The hope that we experience in the birth of Jesus. It is a good time to talk about hope. Right? We're in a moment that feels hopeful doesn't it? I mean, we're like, we're like that, that dove that's perched on the windowsill of Noah's ark, right? About to sort of fly down, poised and ready to flap to the ground as the, the waters, those flood waters recede. Or in our case, as that COVID-19 virus recedes, we are in a moment of great hope. Now, we will forever remember this as COVID Christmas. And we will not celebrate a COVID Christmas again because there is a vaccine on the way that will vanquish the virus. And that is good news. That's a Christmas present promised to be given to us next year. You know, I love that that feeling of waiting for a present, a Christmas present. I remember when I was a, a little kid, I would spend hours going through, probably about starting the end of October, that, that great big giant Sears catalog that would be mailed to our home. Some of you may remember that great big Sears catalog. It had everything in it, and I would sit there for hours looking at all the toys, flipping through the pages, and eventually, maybe around Thanksgiving, I would hone in on that toy that I thought would be just right for Christmas, and I would take a, a magic marker, and I, probably a crayon, and I, and I would circle it, right? I'd circle it, and then I would live in this wonderful space of anticipation, waiting to see if my hope would become a reality. And I, I must say, uh, I grew up in a world where mostly hope became a reality. Santa's elves would review that Sears catalog looking for the dog-eared pages with the circle in the middle. And lo and behold, on Christmas morning, my hope would come into being as a gift there, right there, under the Christmas tree. And so one year, I don't know how old I was, maybe nine or ten, I set my hopes on a ventriloquist dummy. His name was Simon Says with a Z, and he had a red shirt and blue pants and brown shoes. He was, he was pretty sophisticated, you know, for a kid, for a dummy, you'd have to put your hand in the back and you could turn the head and move the lever to make the mouth go up and down and push the button for the eyes to go sideways sort of the, the youthful version 
of that Charlie McCarthy dummy. Simon says, and I circled it, and I waited in hope. And then Christmas morning arrived, and there, Simon says, sat under the Christmas tree. Now my greatest hopes for a future in ventriloquism could be lived out. This wasn't something I was going to just dabble in, right? I mean, you don't dabble in ventriloquism, because if you do, it sort of sounds like mumbling. No, you can't be sort of a good ventriloquist. Otherwise, people won't know that you're doing ventriloquism. So I was all in. Like, I, I was all in. I had big hopes, Broadway or, or maybe even better, a telethon. So I snatched that dummy out from under the tree, and I began to practice right then. And I practiced for a day or two or, or maybe even three before Simon Says ended up on that second bed in my bedroom, at least for a while. Because after a while, I got a little freaked out looking over at him in the middle of the night, lying there with his eyes open. So I thought it was best to just put him in the closet. Put him in the closet with his face facing the wall. And then one night, poof, he disappeared. No, I'm just kidding. That, that did not happen. <laughs> but, but in time, he did exit stage left in a bag destined for goodwill. And my hope for a future in ventriloquism exited with him. You know, that's the thing about hope for a future state of being. It often feels more powerful in anticipation than in fulfillment. In other words, I cherished my hope-filled future as a ventriloquist more than ventriloquism itself. Once that dummy arrived, the hope vanished as the reality turned out to be not quite as compelling as I imagined it would be. And so, and so here's the lesson I'm learning as I reflect on that particular experience slash trauma from my past. It is a lesson that I suppose, I suppose applies to our anticipation of the vaccine as well. Hope, hope in the Christian vernacular is not a feeling, nor is it an anticipated future state of being. Hope is not synonymous with a particular outcome, nor is it an emotion that slowly surges in anticipation of a Christmas gift. No, no. Hope is a present reality. Hope is a known fact. Hope is the sure and steadfast anchor of our souls to God, right? Ours is a hope connected at the foundation of a living, loving, ever-present God. Hope isn't a present under the Christmas tree. Hope is the tree itself, the tree still planted with roots deep down into the ground. Hope is a present state of our life grounded in God. You know, tonight we, tonight we celebrate hope articulated through the birth of a child. Hope coming into the world. Hope that has a name, and that name is Jesus. Now the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul claims we should boast about this hope. And not only that, he says, we should also boast about our suffering. Because as he writes in his letter to the Romans, suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us like ventriloquism might. Hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Right? Like that Holy Spirit, that dove flying out of the ark and into the world that has been transformed as the water 
recedes. We live in a world that is being transformed. So tonight, then, we celebrate God filling our cup with hope, not for things to come, not for things under the tree, for again, as, as Paul writes, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we wait for what we do not see, and we wait for it patiently, we wait in hope. It's present tense. We wait in hope, nurturing our souls to grow more deeply, to become more rooted in the love of God, the love of God that is right here, right now. Now, another apostle, a guy named Timothy, reminds us this. There is no hope in people. There is no hope in circumstances. There is no hope in things of the world. Only hope set upon the living God. The living God who has a name we know. Jesus is hope articulated. Hope is not out there. Hope is right here. Hope gets us through whatever, whenever, wherever. And while hope is often revealed in the petri dish of suffering, as it has been, I might add, for us in this pandemic, hope will remain after the pandemic is gone. Because the reality of hope is that it is anchored. It is the anchor. It is the rope that connects us to God right now and in every moment of every moment. It is hope that then allows us to be sure-footed, irrespective of the circumstances we find ourselves in. Now, now Mary is our role model. Right? Mary, who we meet in Scripture tonight, Mary the mother of Jesus, she is steady and sure-footed. Right? The story reflects that. There she is in a strange city where she's probably never been before, sitting in a manger with a lot of animals, just having given birth to her first child, with shepherds there bowing down to the baby she has swaddled in her arms. And what grounds her is hope. Not for the child's future, but for her soul's steady connection to God in that very moment, she is our role model. It is this hope that she ponders in her heart. To hope is to bathe in the love of God in that moment while simultaneously trusting God with all future outcome. And Mary ponders both, loving God and wondering what God's going to do. And so, too, as we approach a world with a vaccine that will vanquish the virus, I invite you with me to bathe in the love of God while pondering what God will do. You see, what I have uh, experienced uh, and seen, actually, in this time of COVID-19 personally for myself and, and within the community that we call this church, but also throughout our nation at large, what I have experienced and seen are cracks that have been revealed. Cracks that has, have appeared as if an air gun has blown across that sidewalk out in front of your house. And where there hadn't been any cracks before, suddenly cracks appear. Right? Cracks in marriages, cracks in communications with our children, cracks in civic conversation and political discord, course. And if we're willing to go there, right, cracks in our own hearts, right, cracks of loneliness, the cracks of compulsion, cracks of distractedness. And, and the revelation, the revelation of these cracks is not that they exist. I think maybe if we were paying attention, we know they exist, and not that we can necessarily fix them. We might be able to, or we might not, but that with them and despite them, we are still anchored in hope. In fact, we can even boast about these cracks, right, this suffering, like Paul said, right, 
Boasting about this suffering gives us a chance, furthermore, to boast about hope, hope with the name, the name of Jesus. Now, now I don't know what our post-COVID world is going to look like. Though I'm sure some things are going to happen, like I'm sure that next Christmas Eve, this place is going to be jam-packed, and you're going to be here with me in this place, giving thanks to God and celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. I'm pretty sure about that. But I am less sure about how our civic discord is going to improve. I'm, I'm less sure about how tattered relationships will be repaired. I am less sure how unhelpful habits that we've developed will be resolved. That said, I, I do believe that reconciliation within ourselves, between our neighbors, and throughout this nation is possible and preferable. And I do have energy to work for a more just and connected and healthy world. That's what God hopes for us after all, right? God hopes that we are agents of reconciliation within ourselves, within our communities, and throughout this world that God set us in, you and I, right here, right now. Now, there's one thing I'm completely sure of that will happen in this post-COVID world, no matter what the world is like when the waters of COVID recede. What I am sure of is that hope remains, that hope endures. Hope anchors our souls to the love of God. And I know the name of that love. I know the name of that hope. And so do you. And so tonight, I pray you leave and go on to wherever you're going on to next with a new way to ponder Right? Hope anchored in God through the person of Jesus. Hope is present. It's present. Right? Not because it's seen, nor realized in action, nor provoked by feelings, but because of our ever-present connection to the living, loving, enduring God, God with a name whose birth we celebrate tonight. Merry Christmas. May your souls hold fast to the anchor of hope. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered to death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this holy night, as we celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ, let us pray for the church 
and for the world. Grant, O Lord, that your church may be a sign of truth and hope. May our unity give you glory throughout the world and serve as a sign of your faithful love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the leaders of all nations and those whom they govern, that justice and peace may increase. May we experience the fruits of righteousness and the blessings of your reign of love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May this good earth and its creatures, blessed through the birth of the Christ child, reveal your glory. Give us grace to guard its riches wisely and to share its bounty justly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless this community and this congregation and all who are dear to us. May we embrace the good news of your birth and share it generously with all those seeking your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer. May the light of your Son bring healing, and may we be agents of hope in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who have died in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone, grant them rest and the sure knowledge of your peace. Remind us, Lord, that neither death nor life will separate us from your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your son Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. To us a child is born. To us a son is given, and he shall be called the Prince of Peace. be with you and also with you lift up your hearts you lift them to the lord 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who, by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit, was made a perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, the resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Join me in lifting your bread and your wine. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Thank you. 
Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season. Scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your heart with the light of his presence. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the good news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. May God, who in the word made flesh joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you the peace and favor. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.